everybody, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today I'm going to be covering the three most commonly asked questions when it comes to feeding rodents to your pet snakes. First, how do you prepare rodents to feed to a pet snake? And then, how do you store frozen rodents, and how long do they last in your freezer? And finally, where should you purchase rodents from? The USDA recommends three different methods when it comes to thawing meat for human consumption. First, there's thawing it in the fridge. You just basically let meat sit in the fridge after it comes out of the freezer, go right into the fridge, let it thaw, and this the time it'll take depends on what temperature your fridge is set at. Of course, the fridge that's set to 37 degrees will take longer for that rodent to thaw than if it's set to 40 degrees. For mice, it takes usually a couple of hours on average for them to thaw in the fridge, and for rats, it can take upwards of four to five hours. This means you have to plan ahead and put your rodents in the fridge way ahead of time so they have plenty of time to thaw and a good way to make sure you aren't in a rush to thaw your rodents if you want to use the fridge method is to just put your rodents from the freezer into the fridge the night before so that overnight they can thaw. The second method the USDA recommends for thawing frozen meat is to let it sit in cold water. This means simply putting the rodents from freezer to a bowl of cold water and then you may have to change that water every 30 minutes or so to keep it fresh and and also to keep it a little bit warmer because that frozen rodent inside will cool down the temperature of the water. Now by changing it every 30 minutes or so, you, you can expect your rodents to thaw after about an hour or so, and that all depends on what temperature of water you're using. Alternatively, you can put a bowl of water in the sink, as long as you completely sterilize it afterwards, and let a small stream of cool water run on top of the meat and just drain down in the sink, down the drain basically, and then you don't have to change that water. Uh, if you don't like having constantly running water though from your sink, then just swapping out that water in the bowl every 30 minutes will do just fine. Now, it is debatable whether or not you should have the rodents that's soaking in water in a bag or not. I personally do not use a bag, and basically the, the, the negative, the con to not using a bag, is that your rodent will become wet because it's sitting directly in water, and therefore substrate inside of the snake's habitat will be more likely to stick to the rodent. And if the snake then eats the rodent with all the bedding stuck to it, a little bit's typically fine, it's not gonna hurt it. But if there's a lot of substrate stuck to the rodent it eats, it can cause impaction issues where they're not able to pass that substrate through. So what we do is we do thaw our rodents in water. I'll get to what temperature we use in a little bit here. And we kind of put them in a feeding tray, which is more often than not just the snake's cave flipped upside down. We put the mouse in there and that's where the snake eats. And that usually keeps the snake more confined to a feeding area and less likely to drag that rodent all around their substrate. The third method the USDA recommends for heating frozen meat is to use the microwave, but don't use the microwave for rodents. They will likely explode. Trust me on this, don't try it. You don't want a popped mouse or rat inside of your microwave. That's just that's just terrible. If you manage to warm up a rodent in the microwave without it exploding, it will likely have heated unevenly, and so some portions will be hot, whereas some will still be cold, and that will not only discourage your snake from eating it, but it can also cause burns because of the hot portions. It can actually burn your snake on the inside. So just trust me, don't use the microwave to heat up your rodents. Once your rodent is thawed, then you just have to warm it up and feed it to your snake. The ideal temperature for rodents is 98.5 0.6 degrees, which is the temperature in which most mammals thrive at when they're alive. But since it's not ideal to get a mouse to exactly 98.6 degrees, just make it warm-ish. Now with many colubrids, you can pretty much just warm up a rodent to slightly above or even at room temperature and the snakes will take it just fine. And it's safer to do that than to offer them too hot of a rodent. But some snakes like pythons that have heat sensing pit organs that they use to detect their, their prey around them, they're a little bit more sensitive and they seem to prefer warmer bodied rodents. So for the pythons like ball pythons, the woma python here is a bad example because they actually don't have, they're one of two species of pythons, them and black headed pythons that don't have heat sensing pits so I shouldn't have her out for this so we'll just put her down there but other snakes with heat sensing pits tend to prefer the rodents to be a little bit warmer since they use those pits to actually hunt 
The most common method for warming up rodents after they've been thawed is just to simply place them in warm water. That's what like 90% of snake owners do. If you're using a bowl or a mug to thaw your rodents in, definitely make sure to dedicate that bowl or mug to just being used for rodents, not for human food later on. A couple other methods people will use and you'll read about online if you ask are that some people place a mouse under a heat lamp, others will blow it with a hair dryer, and some will just let a frozen and rodents sit on the counter until it becomes room temperature and feed it off at that temperature. Keep in mind though, the longer you let a rodent sit out at room temperature or under a basking bulb, the more bacteria that will grow on its body. And bacteria on a dead animal will grow quickly. So I personally don't use those methods. What I do is I thaw the rodents in warm water. I take a frozen rodent, I put it in warm water, and once it's up to temperature, I feed it to the snake right away. This keeps the time between frozen to feeding minimized, so there's less of a chance of bacteria growing on that rodent, but there are many different ways to thaw rodents, so don't think that is the only way to do it, just because I do it. Some people might say that by putting a frozen rodent directly into warm water may cause some bacteria to grow, but I think it's more important for it to thaw faster to get fed to the snake quicker so there's less time for bacteria to grow and we've never had an issue with it. But don't just take my opinion, do your research, get multiple opinions on the subject and make your own well-informed, educated decision on what you think will be best for your own pet snake. Speaking of feeding the rodent to the snake once it's ready to go, here's just a random tip for you when it comes to holding the rodents. I mean, if you're just gonna let it lay in their upside down cave or in a feeding tray, you, don't, you can just discard this. But if you like to dangle the rodent in front of the snake, don't dangle it by the tail. I mean, in the wild, a rodent isn't going to dangle by its tail when it's running around in front of a snake, it's, it's predator. Instead, it's going to maintain more of a horizontal position as it runs by. So snakes, with their orientation of their jaw, are used to striking straight out and grabbing the mouth sideways and wrapping or coiling after that. They don't quite know to turn their head sideways and grab the mouth sideways because it's hanging in a different orientation. So instead of grabbing it by its tail or hanging it by its tail, hold the mouse by its mid body or honestly by its back end. Then you can hold it more securely and aim the head of the mouse to the snake's mouth. And then they'll be more likely to take it head first, which is a lot easier for them to eat than tail first. If you're concerned that you wouldn't be able to wiggle the mouse enough and make it look alive to your snake, trust me, you can still wiggle the mouse just fine by holding onto the back end instead of the tail. Although that being said, some snakes do just fine eating it when it's being dangled by the tail. It depends on the snake, it depends on your pet snake. From my experience, I've found that pythons like retics and ball pythons, they're so quick to strike at their rat and immediately coil around it that they don't really care what direction or how they grab it with their mouth because they're gonna immediately wrap up the rest of the rodent afterwards. So dangling a rodent by its tail isn't necessarily the end of the world. It just tends to help them out by holding it more securely. Next, how do you store rodents and how long will they last in your freezer? Well, that depends on how you store them, actually. You definitely want to keep rodents in an airtight container or a bag, like a Ziploc bag. Often rodents are sold in a Ziploc bag, which is really nice because it's resealable. You can just close it up and put them back in the freezer after you take what you need. Other times they're sold in a bag that once you cut it open, you should really move all the rodents into a new Ziploc bag so that it can become airtight again. Now, how long they last is debatable. Some people say that after you buy rodents, they last around three months in the freezer, whereas others will say they can last anywhere from six to eight months in the freezer. The consensus seems to be, after the research that I've done on the subject, that if you are storing your rodents in your indoor freezer, your day-to-day -day freezer, like kitchen freezer, that's being opened quite frequently, then they typically only last around three months or so. And that's because that door is getting opened, new air is coming in, the temperature might fluctuate slightly, so they just don't last quite as long. Whereas if you store your rodents in a deep freezer that doesn't get open very frequently, that's when they are typically able to last six to eight months. After that, the fats start to denature in the mouse and the vitamins start to degrade, so it's best to feed them basically as soon as you can. Now, if your rodents have some freezer burn on them, it's perfectly fine to still feed those rodents. Some snakes, I think, don't like the taste from what I've heard. Mine seem to not care, but you can still feed them. Being freezer burnt means that they're just starting to lose their 
their nutritional value. Now, where should you buy rodents for your pet snakes? Now, the one place I would recommend not buying them from would be your large chain pet store. You know the ones I'm talking about. They are ridiculously priced at these stores. Like, from back, back from when I worked at one, they were $12.99 for a pack of six small pinky mice, and that is ridiculous. Instead, if you want to buy them in person, support your local reptile store. Mom and pop shops are still typically cheaper than chain stores. You can also typically buy frozen rodents at your local reptile expo. At almost every expo in my area, there's at least one frozen rodent vendor and they have pretty good prices. Maybe not quite as cheap as online, but you don't have to pay for shipping. So that makes up for it right there. If you want to buy in bulk, then you might want to consider buying them online. The one downside to buying bulk rodents online is that shipping is usually $29 per box. I don't know why it's $29, probably to keep it under $30 so it looks cheaper to our eyes. But the reason why it's more expensive than other products you might buy online is because they are packed with dry ice. So you're paying for the price of not only insulation in the box to keep them frozen during transit, but also the dry ice inside. However, purchasing even one bag of rodents, they usually are sold in bags of 50 or 100, will save you more than the cost of shipping compared to buying them at one of those large chain pet stores. Since shipping frozen rodents is based on how many boxes you order, you may as well make the best of it and fill it up with rodents. Buy as many as you can use within the six months they'll be good for, and then you can use that $29 to its fullest extent. If you do decide to purchase bulk rodents online, the three places that we have ordered from in the past, and no, these aren't sponsors at all, this is really where we've ordered rodents multiple times in the past, are Rodent Pro, the Big Cheese Rodent Factory, and American Rodent Supply. And over the years of ordering from these guys, we've discovered that Rodent Pro has fantastic prices. They have amazing sales on their rodents. They have a flat rate $29 shipping per box. However, their rodent sizes tend to run a little bit smaller than the other two websites. The Big Cheese Rodent Factory also has flat rate shipping of $29 per box, and they have great prices too. A few of their rodents are slightly higher in price depending on the size and mice versus rats than Rodent Pro. However, Big Cheese rodents tend to run larger in size, so you kind of get what you pay for. And finally, American Rodent Supply also has great prices, and they have rodents that run larger in size, which is nice. However, their shipping varies based on where you live. It starts at about $29 if you're living on the eastern part of the United States, which is where they're located. And the further west you go in the United States, the uh, higher their shipping cost is per box, up to $99 if you're in California or anywhere near the west coast. However, American Rodent Supply's sales will often outcompete both Rodent Pro and Big Cheese, which can make up for some of those shipping costs. So it really depends on when you order and when their sales are, where you live, and what you need. Whether you need small mice, which might be lower priced with one of those three websites, or you need large rats, which are a better deal somewhere else. Uh, so look through all of your options and choose what's best for you. One wonderful way around paying $29 for shipping per box is to split orders with a friend. We have done this many times. I think we once even split an order with two other friends, so we only paid $10 for shipping. So I highly recommend if you have any other snake owners in your area or snake friends, just split an order and split the shipping cost. This, by the way, is Popeye, otherwise known as Popcorn. When I bring him to programs, he looks like buttered popcorn. And uh, he is our albino labyrinth mutation Burmese python. He is a rescue. He's a little bit special, but he's so cute. We just love him. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you for backing this channel. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you learned something new today, and we'll see you next time.